Welcome back, I am Captain Xavier, and this is my celebratory video for having reached 2,000 subscribers. I want to thank you all so much for your support. I am going to continue to use your suggestions and ideas to come up with a more fascinating stuff. I still have all sorts of toys I haven't even gotten around to showing you yet, so we're going to continue to have a lot of fun. I am also now opening myself up for doing commissions. I've got all the materials and tools that I think I need to be able to start doing some really fun commissions for you guys. So I will have all the information for that uh, on my main channel page. I'll have my P.O. box and an email address that you can reach me at to discuss things. Um, pricings, you know, what things I'm willing to do, what things I'm not willing to do, what they will cost, all that sort of thing. We can discuss that. But for this video, I'm going to discuss a brief overview of all of my shoulder weapons. Each weapon will then have its own more detailed video, including internals and complicated features and all of that. Those videos will also include firing demonstrations of each one. Uh, this one will include showing how they all mount to the shoulders. And then I'm also going to be doing a uh, firing demonstration of all of them together as soon as I can find a place large enough to fire things like the Titan and I also want to, you know, do my... People keep asking what the range is on my bazooka, and right now I honestly don't have any idea. Uh, it's at least 40 yards, but I haven't been able to actually prove that. I'm hoping I can find a, like, a high school football field that I can go fire things in that are conveniently marked in yards. So, without any further ado, I'm going to discuss the first shoulder cannon that I made, which was this one. And a lot of people have, you know, pointed out that, oh, hey, it makes you, you've got a shoulder weapon, it makes you like Predator. Well, they haven't actually seen this one, which actually has the three laser pointers on it. Two of them are currently not functioning, and I haven't figured out why yet. They may just have burned out because they were cheap dollar store laser pointers. Uh, but, yes, I went for the full Predator look, including laser sights. Um, the original cannon, it's still fired manually, if you want. You can pull the trigger and it works. Uh, it is built out of a Nerf Speed Swarm, I believe, uh, from the Dart Tag line, and I went with it because it's fully automatic and is very simple internally. Uh, the, pulling the trigger just pushes a button, which makes the motor go. That's something that I could wire a remote up to. So, I did. The original way that this was fired was by remote. I did not have the secondary trigger on IRE at the time. That is a recent feature. I think that's actually the latest feature of IRE. I have upgraded this one so that it can now be fired using IRE's shoulder uh, secondary trigger. But originally it was fired using this remote. And right now it is set up so that when you push the button, the gun turns on and continues to fire until you push the button again, rather than pushing and holding and it firing and when you let go it stops. Uh, the secondary trigger works that way, so when it's on the shoulder, I can fire it one round at a time at dedicated targets. The remote is for when I'm setting it up as a booby trap somewhere. I want to be able to just, when the person comes into range, push the button and it starts firing, and while they're distracted, I can then attack them. So, or, you know, cover a hallway or something for a short amount of time. Something where I'm not worried about how long it keeps firing. And then when it's out of ammo, I can push the button and turn it off. So... For setting it up as a trap, I added the bipod from a long shot that I'd cut off, that somebody had actually cut off because they were doing an integration of some kind and they let me have the stock. So, when you push the button, it starts firing, and when you push it again, it turns off. Like I said, before I had the IRE's secondary trigger, that was the only way to fire it. And so, running around on the battlefield with a remote in my hand in order to fire my shoulder cannon was extremely cumbersome. So, I rigged up a another button so that I could then tuck the remote into my glove and fire it by pushing the button that's right here. So now when you push the button it starts firing and when you push the button again it stops. You push the button and it starts firing, push the button again and it stops. So that was how the original one worked. The next shoulder cannon that I built was this one, made out of a Dart Zone Scorpion. This has the distinction of being the only one that doesn't have a manual fire option. This one can only be fired using Iyer's secondary trigger. And that is because I don't plan to use this one as any kind of a sentry gun. It's only ever going to be mounted on my shoulder. And so, 
I ended up minimizing the trigger off, and so I just couldn't be bothered to put in a manual trigger. Uh, it is very neat in that the barrel does rotate and it's belt fed. It looks just wicked on the shoulder. Uh, for the people that said that I looked more like um, War Machine than the Predator, this is the one that makes me look like War Machine. And it fires, as I said, using Iyer's secondary trigger. So we'll bring Iyer up here for a second. The plug for it is on the back right there. There is then a, an on switch, which turns on the flywheels. So I can, while in combat, I'd reach up and turn on the flywheels. And it just stays on. And then when you pull the trigger, the barrel rotates and the belt feeds. Uh, originally, this one was remote controlled, and it had a two-channel remote. One channel that turned on the flywheels, and the other channel that turned that made the gun start firing. And like the original one, it would just keep firing until it was out. And I absolutely did not like that system. Um, all the different motors that are in this thing had a tendency to disrupt the receiver uh, because of all the electromagnetic interference. And so it was really hard to get it to turn back off once it turned on. So I scrapped the whole remote thing and made it just fire using Iyer's secondary trigger. The next one that I built was a shoulder-mounted Titan because I'm a madman, that's why. And this one was also always intended to be either shoulder-fired or remote-fired, but this one had the distinction of having a, a manual fire option of being able to push this button to fire it. This one, since it's air-powered, is operates using the same solenoid as my Nerf mine. So there's a solenoid in there that when you push the button or activate the remote, or this one's also wired for ire, push the button, it pulls the solenoid and releases the air. This is currently set up to fire, of course, Titan missiles. But the Titan never did fire its rockets particularly far, and I wanted something with more versatility, more modularity, if you will. And so I made it fire, you guessed it, any and all of Iyer's attachments. So underneath the main barrel, there is a bit of thread that allows me to attach any of Iyer's barrel attachments on, so I can fire uh, demolisher rockets off of it, which it fires absolutely beautifully. I can fire singled elites, giving me a shoulder-mounted sniper cannon. I can attach the absolvers and have a shoulder-mounted shotgun. Um, I have recently made a new absolver for Iyer based on a, uh, a, a suggestion made by in the comments. This is a sledge fire shell made into an absolver, which, since it's got fewer darts, has much more power and is absolutely beautiful. This is my new favorite absolver for Iyer. It's got beautiful range and a beautiful spread and is faster to, re to reload because it's only three barrels. Uh, good tight seal the whole way down, absolutely fantastic. I have also done something fabulous with this, which will come up in another video uh, that I think you guys will very much enjoy. This one has tactical rail. And do you ask why on earth would you want tack rail on a shoulder-mounted Titan? Well, I'll show you. If you put the Stampede's bipod foregrip on it, you now have a mortar that can be fired remotely or manually because you do still have the manual fire option, but you could also set this up somewhere and use it as a wonderful distraction or to shell long range areas all remotely, which is just beautiful. It uses the same bike pump as Iyer does to get pressure and the pressure gauge does still work. So you can tell when it's got plenty of pressure in it. You then fit whatever attachment you see fit to put on it, and fire away. God, that thing works beautifully. Last but not least, well, possibly least, we have the latest addition to my shoulder guns, and this one is the same design as the first one, but this one is obviously, as you can tell, much more simplified. This one does not have a remote option. It's just fired using Iyer's secondary trigger. Doesn't have the bipod. 
So this is the one that I, I built was as the first test of the secondary trigger feature. And afterwards, I went back and retrofitted the old shoulder weapons so that they could also be fired using Iyer's secondary trigger. This one also has the manual fire option, of course. And can also be fired using Iyer's secondary... We'll go ahead and demonstrate that again. So... Plug that in and then pull Iyer's secondary trigger. Which is nice because now you have the option of firing it one round at a time if you feel like it. Now I'm going to show you how they actually mount to the body armor. Alright, this is the shoulder mount on my plate carrier. The original one was a piece of ABS pipe that I heated up and molded the speed swarm handle into. I then later added the magnet for the other additions and altered the design a little. Add a little long shot bipod for decoration. And then, of course, the cable, which runs down the sling that Iyer then attaches to. And that's how it's fired. The original one just fits in and locks in place. And then the cable gets plugged in on this side. And then when you pull the trigger, that's how it fires. Fairly simple. You can reach up and unplug it and pull it off to use it as a mine. The Scorpion design is the one that really makes me look like War Machine, that I'm really quite pleased with. Then when you turn on the Scorpion and pull the lower trigger, it shoots. Finally, we have the Titan, which also locks on with magnets. And the way I designed it, the original little sight looking thing happens to line up right with my eye. So I can actually lean over, look through it like I'm actually sighting it, reach up and push this button to fire it if I'm using it like a sniper rifle, or I can fire it using ire if I've got an absolver on there and don't really feel like aiming. Um, it also then pops right off and you can put the bipod on and set it up as a mine if you so desire. The latest one of course is the simplest. Like I said, it just fits on, plugs in, and fires away. There you have it. I'll be doing outdoor firing videos as soon as I can find a large enough venue. I will also be doing build videos on each and every one of these, so be patient. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, ideas, just want to call me a huge nerd, you go right ahead in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.